Good morning and welcome back to this loft conversion series. I'm filming outside like I did on the last one because I want to start as we move forward I want to start showing you progress on the dormer when we get to that point so you can see it now before we start and also when we do the um, the ground floor extension you'll be able to get the same view then of what we've done and how we've put it together so I thought that might be quite interesting for you. As always, I'll go around the inside anyway, and we'll talk about what we're doing. But in short, today is starting the chipboard flooring. So I'll start doing the chipboard floor as I talked about last video. We'll set out in the eaves of the front elevation, work our way out, sort the, the base plate out for the ashlar wall, and then we'll progress through the loft towards the back of the loft, stopping at the, the steel to the rear. Good morning stopping at the at the rear of the property where the steel finishes because we can't as you know we can't put the floor in yet because we've got to put the um get the scaffold round and put that in first so that's the plan we can also do we put the floor in we can also start putting the noggins in for the stud walls because the occupier is happy to go with the architect's plans and dimensions of where all the rooms are so we can now actually put the noggins in or double rafters in which uh, double uh, joists depending depends on which we decide to get the wall sorted out as well. So let's go inside and have a say hello to Michael and have a quick uh, a quick look at what we're going to do today. Okay, so when we left you, last episode, if you haven't been here before, this is where we are at the moment with our loft conversion. So all this uh, floor joists are all done, apart from the front, which I've explained multiple times, but I'll do it very, very quickly, people that haven't been here before. We do like new people coming to the channel. We're leaving this bit out because we've got to take the roof off to put the, the dormer on and the, the floor joist in and then we'll put the dormer on top of the floor joist. So that's a quick recap. So today's plan is to get these, let me pan out, to get these up on top of the floor. So the first plan is, and we've just come up with a bit of a new plan. So what we think we're going to do is get the steel pinner out pin these down first all the way down we're going to put at least one possibly two in each one of these um, we haven't I don't believe we've got to fill these holes because that's for timber if we put two pins in it steel pins in these there is no way that they're going to move no way so I think that's what we're going to do we're going to pin all these down steel pins all the way along first of all then what we're going to do we're actually going to use some um, packers then onto here four inch packers right in the middle of this steel to get to this to uh, get over that little bit of a discrepancy there because as you remember again from previous videos we came above the steel to alle alleviate this potential issue of the these touching the underside of the chipboard so where it is now we'll just use these as an example when we pull this chipboard back now it'll go over the top of that and won't uh, catch on it we won't have any problems so that's why I did it. Likewise below, there's a good half inch, 15 mil nearly, to allow us to put an extra piece of plasterboard on there before we run the other plasterboard over the top. Therefore getting over the double boarding issue, we haven't got to double board the whole lot. Oh, at least that's my understanding anyway. So, it, so there we are. So we're gonna put plastic packers now, glue them on onto here, all the way along in every 400 bay. That then allows us to run the chipboard all the way through there, all the way through over the top and just continue. The main reason we've changed plan is because of concerns that how are we going to hold the sole plate down of the ashlar wall without using a three inch steel pin, which I don't believe we've got, or our pin will even do that. And we're down to start having to tech screw and everything else. I did think about putting these back like that putting the 4 by 2 onto there and folding them over the top and but it just creates more problem so this is the new plan we are that's what we're going to do I can't see any issues with that the the plastic packer will take up any void when the chipboard spans over there I could say because it'd be the same height as these we'll measure every single one of these and make sure we're about right or exactly right all the way through first and then when we do the chipboard we can just carry on which also then means we haven't got to put the ashlar stud wall in first or the sole plate in first we can still get all the way in on our backs then to the insulation a lot a lot easier as well so that's what we're going to do we'll get ourselves set up next lot of footage will us uh will be us pinning all these these straps down 
and then setting ourselves out ready to put the chipboard flooring down. a little bit of slow-mo, but we'll have a little bit of fun. Oh. Right then, what we're going to do, we're going to start setting out our first boards. Now, there's loads of different ways you can do it, but this is the reason we're doing it this way, is because you can't appreciate on there how tight that is, but that's that's 40 degrees, and that's 1200, so two boards width less than that, so it's quite tight. Um, so, all we're going to do is first, we're going to gauge about 30 mil or so away from these 2 by 2s you put on with the, with the tongue of the first board all the way across and then we're going to put uh, use this this adhesive see it on the screen all right can you make? not really which not is away. okay so this is what we're using see that all right now multi-use construction adhesive Ilber, Ilbrook PU700 multi-purpose adhesive so Hence, on a foam gun, so it's quite easy to, to use. We haven't got to squeeze a tub, so you just pull the trigger, so it's nice and simple. Um, less stress on the old joints and the old uh, wrists and whatever if you're squeezing at the bottle all day. We've used this channel before, and it's worked for us. It's really, really good. We've never had any problems with it, so this is what we're going to do. The handle's a bit loose on this crap one, though. Maybe this is going to be crap, but there we go anyway, let's see. Bought a new gun, especially. So, all we'll do is we'll set this out first, have a good look, and then we'll use this then on every rafter, and on the board joints as well. Um, it comes out like a foam. Joist. And then, yeah, joist. So, <laughs> me of all people should know better. So, we'll use this on every joist then, um, and on the joints of, uh, of each board. It comes out like a foam, and then the foam dissipates and it goes to a liquid, uh, and you haven't got long before it goes off, so you have to be pretty quick with it, but you got a little bit of movement. And then we'll use these, these, uh, these spack screws, which if you haven't seen them before, they're a star drive. I don't know if you can see that very clear on the video. Um, if you can't, I'll put it as an image as well. So all these are designed to do is, is when you, yes, they are more expensive. However, you haven't got a pre-drill because this is the bit that goes into your, into your, uh, your joist. That space then, if you've ever used put a screw in before, which I'm hoping majority of you probably have, so I'm not gonna explain myself too much, but. Um, when you put a screw in, because it's threaded all the way, what happens is if you don't pile at all, you put your screw in, it touches the joist or whatever you're screwing into, it grabs the material and it separates them like that. Which, if you don't pile at all, normal screws, what happens then is when, the, when it shrinks, the floor shrinks, or once you've had some weight on it, what happens is you get like a, like a, a bouncing movement, you can hear it tapping, because what's happened is, is the, the gap that you've, because you've not pre-drilled, because it's holding on the threads of the normal screw, it'll form a void between the substrate, whatever you're fixing to, and your floorboard and leave you a little gap. And once the threads give way and it starts a bit away, it'll just it'll just won't be fixed right. Um, so what this does is, back on back on point now, what that, that gap there does is, is it'll pull into there first, get to that gap, so it slackens the threads off, and then that top thread threads the opposite way. So it actually pulls it down with it when you're putting your screw in, so you don't need to pilot all these. So yes, they're more expensive, but a lot more efficient, and they hold really well. So that's why we're using these. They're just a better product to use, the best thing to do for these. So, what, what we'll do now is, as I've already said, we'll set our first boards out, and what we're gonna do, again, going back to the very start of this little conversation I've started before I went off a few times, we're gonna use, put one board down first, put another board down, end on end, and then we're gonna use a third board on the joint then to, which we might not be able to look in because we've got that post there. Anyway, we'll have a look at that. We might have to use a level, six foot level. So you can put, put a couple down and then get a six foot level across the board joint. So eight foot board, so I'll come three foot either side of the joint to make sure they're not sitting in a V shape like that. So that's what we'll do. Um, but what we'll do is we move forward along the loft here We'll use a board, the next board, to line these two boards up. 
but once you've come out of the and we've got a bit more headroom as you can see it's quite tight and we can start start moving standing up a little bit better on our knees better we'll start pulling a string line through or pull a laser through then and we can start ironing them through so what you don't want to happen is is you don't want your boards to go in like like that or like that so when you put your next one there's a gap and and it just looks looks terrible it's unprofessional these, these two bonding boards one can go that side one can go that side so yeah they, that's they, it they don't need to book together these two sound that's it then so so that's what we'll do we'll show a little bit of footage of us doing it um or maybe even not actually i'm going to say we're not going to show that in there because it's a pain we will show the complete process glue screw lining up when we come out of that little area there so i think that's what we'll do a bit better won't it? that's what we'll do then so next bit of footage you'll see will us we've already put the boards down and you will see us setting out properly okay So we're down to our, you can see all the way through there, down to our last board. And because we're trying to get into what we haven't done, we haven't glued this one with that foam I talked about, but I will show you that tomorrow. However, what we have done, and is I will do in a minute, is I've just got some of this uh, expansion, expansion foam to stop that whole wood on metal knocking that we talked about the cause when you put screws in as well, is we've been running expansion foam on here, on top of there. That's our pack as I talked about. So that then bridges the gap between these two, these two timbers. Let me pan out a little bit, if I can. Yeah, so between that one and this one, because it's above the steel, remember, that packer now will stop any gap or any um, gap underneath it. So we put the 4 by 2 on top then to form this uh, ashlar wall, which goes up here. There'll be no, uh, no gap under it, so that'll stop it. That's easy for us now. So we can run that now against our post all the way along and up to it rather than messing about because you would have seen that we've already metal fixed all of our straps so where these overlap there's two there and one on the edges so that those two covers both straps and of course they've been nailed both at an all down the sides anyway so that's great so what we're going to do now we're going to put some foam across there foam across there so there's no wood on metal wood on metal action going on uh, and then we'll screw this blast board in which is this one around the steel and that's just good to go ready for the morning then we'll just come straight off with our glue pull a string line check 100% in line off we go uh, right then we're going to move on to our uh, I'm going to call it our main row now where we haven't got so much I've got a little bit more headroom apart from this I've got two bumps on my head to show it um, we're going to go to start with our first main row now in, in the room where we're going to start using this glue now we've only got a board and two thirds before we get to the, um, the stairwell, but we are going to run all the way through the stairwell and do the likewise where, where Mickey's behind the camera. There's a there's a big stairwell there which you would have seen on the footage, footage before. We're going to fill that in, but I'll show you that anyway, just for just for safety really, because it's too big to leave open. Someone's going to fall down it. So anyway, I'll give this a good shake. If I just open this up now and I can show you, this is just the the way we're going to do it really this is it repeat repeat as I've said before show you what we do first so goes on just like expansion foam does he says before it comes out so that's that's probably about a better a better 10 mil bead maybe it's not meant to come out like expansion foam does and I know all these joists are flat so I'm, I'm not too worried about getting contact on every rafter because I know that they will because the rafters that the rafters again Mick Mick saying rafters again Mick I just let you get away with it now my joists are flat so I'm not too fussed about uh, you know if these are old joists i'll be a bit more concerned because you could have quite a massive gap between from one to the other so i'll just put a bit in there as well and you don't want to put too much in there because you could end up with a problem where it, there's too much in there and it forces the uh you are allowed to stick it in all the way oh hang on can i say that on the channel okay. like stick it in all the way some people might have put it in there first instead of leaning on the glue it's up to you no i'm just walking a oh no I um, anyway, so I've got you've done that. Be mindful of the fact of your drying time, so don't press about once you've. Uh... Where's my knocker? Where's my knocker? 
knocker gun. I've lost my knocker stick. Careful with these balls, thank you, Michael. Be careful with these balls because these edges, because we're doing it the way we're doing it, which is with having the uh, the groove sticking out. When you hammer it, you've got to be careful because you can smash the edges off. So just use uh, either another piece of this, so you've got the the option to put the tongue in there and knock it, or just a piece of wood, a piece of flat wood. It doesn't need anything too. If you've got to hammer it too hard, then there's clearly something stuck in the groove of that one. So just stepping back a little bit if you are going to keep doing it and there's, and there's you know dust everywhere and just check in the groove that there's nothing gone into when you're pushing it in you're trying to push against a bit of wood or if your gap's not closed that might be the reason why so once you've done that then what we do then is is what i haven't done so i'm going to go back because i haven't done it because i'm trying to talk and do it at the same time when i'm a bloke sometimes we can't multitask so mark your rafters and the reason for this is because my oh jesus rafters um sorry mom i said, I said jesus sorry um you need to mark them because they are different to the other side especially here ah. sticking already so like that Make sure it's nice and tight, which it is. Oh, it's not. This end. And then what we tend to do is we tend to put the one screw in at this end. You haven't got to go mad. Just below the surface is fine. Don't smash them in and go halfway through your board because it. It negates the, the use of a fixing because you're fixing into into nothing. Plus the fact the top surface is the hardest. So the only problem with these, we talked about this yesterday, with Mick, is the point of these spat screws isn't quite sharp enough. It might just be this chip, this chipboard. But so what we tend to do is this. Start it off with a with a nail. Yeah. Start off with a bit of a tap from the hammer. So we'll say them again. I can put one on this board now as well. While I'm at it. And then we tend to do, because we're using this glue, we're only going to put three in. Um, you can put four in depending what uh, where it is, what it I don't know if it's going to be exposed for a little bit longer. We did four at the garden room, didn't we? Because it was exposed for longer. So just put one in the middle of your board, but don't put one on this end. For the simple reasons, when you come to put your next board in, you may have pulled it down a bit too tight. Now I know the glue's going to have it and it'd be tight anyway, but it just gives you the option of that. If you need to leave it up a little bit, you've got the option still. Because if, if you have got any problems with your, your joists, being a little bit up and down, which we haven't. Um, if you screw this board down, for example, and these two are two mil higher than this one, you're going to screw your board down like that and when you try and put your next one in you'll, you'll have to try and force it down and knock it in and you start damaging your board so don't put your screw in along your edge of your board um, initially do it like we've done there put this board in and put the two in together by the fact that you've glued that one to that one and then you're going to put two screws in it doesn't matter if it's if the glue you know comes comes away at this end it doesn't matter that much so so yeah just put your uh, Put your middle screw in as well. Leave this one. You can get your level if you wanted to and put it along here. Talk about that. to the centre of your centre of your joist there, and you can draw lines. But I'm happy just to do it a long time, just to eye mine through. I'm happy with that. Talk about flying the joist with these boards. Do it about what? Sorry. Flying the joist with these yes. boards as well. Yes. Um, what Mick's just pointed out. You haven't got these tongue and groove boards are designed. These are 22 mil. They're designed it, it, with with the fact that you're not going to land on every every joist in mind. This is why. But what you do need to make sure is that you you span your joints. Like this board, 
is what was this one? Mick 1500, 1600? Yeah, something like that. It was nothing. No, it's actually 1700, but. Um, and these boards are 2.4. So we started with this because it was an off cut from the last board over there, and that's we think that's the best use of your, of your product. Any flooring you're doing, whether it's long tiles or laminate or whatever you're doing, if you go do it in a row, get it straight, your off cut from when you put your last row in, your off cut will automatically become the start of this row because you've cut that end off. However, you've got to make sure that your, your joints aren't too close together because it, 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 does, it won't work as well. This joint is supported, these two boards are supported by this full board at the back and this full board at the front. So it supports this joint and supports it there and then either side. As a 400 anyway, but you can put these at 600 centres and you haven't got to have these in the centre of your joist. You haven't got to. Don't matter what anyone says, that's what they're designed for. These are square edged, yes. Old fashioned floorboard, yes. But not these, that's why these are designed this way. Which is why we glue and do it, use a good quality screw as well. So, enough said about that one, Michael. Let's buy that one, into it, I think. Uh, any questions as always stick them in the comments we'll answer them we always do so we'll just keep going through now all the way through screw these down so what we'll do next I think is because we haven't really got a run of, um, of boards we've got to line up what I might do next I'll carry on with this now we'll get these screwed I'll get the next next uh, board screwed in and then what I'll do then is we'll get the uh, we shall cut the method shall we Michael about the getting the boards in line whether we get a string line out or whether we shut the laser or we'll show a method of if this is just a complete run with no stairwell in we'll show you a method of the um, how we get them in line I know we've already done those but if you remember back, back to earlier we talked about we put them in the six foot level not really that fuss because it's in a cupboard if the joints are slightly out which they're not because they were done right anyway um, this is a fir our first row setting out, this is how we do it. You get your first one in, make sure you're going to have enough gap at that end. Um, we went through this in the garden room, didn't we? Setting the flooring out, you know, if the walls aren't right, we did all that on, on our channel. But uh, we'll go through how to get these in line, make sure that I've talked about, they're not sort of sitting and all your boards, got all your board joints nice. But So I'll carry on, next bit of footage, we'll show you how we're going to set it out. Yeah, Flooring these joints, we've got to have two. Make sure you've got two joists. Oh, yes, good point. For the ends, obviously. Yeah. Um, just going back to the whole the whole joint, you've got to make sure that the off cut you're using, so we'll carry on the end. When you come back to here, you've got to make sure you've got a minimum of two joists. So whether it be 400 or 450, 400, I'd want to go, I'd want three, wouldn't you? Mm. With 400, I'd want to go three joists, but you can use it because it's 18, it's going to be glued in, but. Um, you want to make sure you've got at least two joists. So in this example, this is 400 centres, so you want a minimum of 600, really, as a, as a cut to start that end, which means you can get two good, two good glue and screw fixings before it spans over. What you don't want to do is put fix in there and have the joint there. That No, you need to have two good joists, especially uh, when, you, when your joists are wider apart, like 600, definitely, all day long. Good point, good point. Okay. Right then, we'll carry on.
as you can see, we are up to the point where we can't do any more. We did talk about, I did it on this one, but we did talk about running this board all the way over. But the honest answer is, uh, we got talking, the occupier came and something else happened, we got on the aerial and we just got a bit distracted. So we, we put the glue down and put the board in before we thought, oh, hang on a sec, oh, not to worry. It was just for safety, but I'll just put some railings around. It's not a problem at all. Just It was just to stop us falling down, all the way down there, down the hole. So anyway, we followed the method that we ducked at the very start. Uh, only difference is, once you start your first row, get that bang on. Um, I normally do every couple of rows. Likewise over there, we're done as far as we can over there as well. What's got to happen now is we've then now got to set out the floor joists onto the wall plate there that are going to go through, which in effect then the double um, base plate for the dormer will sit on those joists then. So we need to those first, then we'll put blocking in as well to support it better. So we can't really do that yet. Um, depends on the scaffold. However, if the scaffold's going to take a bit longer than we want it to, it may be that we just go ahead, we just get our... Um, knock some of this off, notch into the, the wall as it is um, and then we start setting our floor joist set so as soon as it does come we can carry on. So as always then, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget that like button or the dislike button, it's entirely up to you if you don't like it then don't watch it. Don't, don't watch it. Uh, yeah. Uh, and also the notification bell ready for the next episode which moving forward we are hoping will be start to form floor joists in there start to set out the dormer we're there so we'll be doing a bit of insulation in there to get that all squared away because there's nothing to go in there electrics plumbing nothing in there so we can get that squared away we can then get the ashlar wall put in place i've got a feeling at the minute i'm going to end up putting mdf in there instead of plasterboard much better idea mdf it can be painted if we wanted it to spray painted when we do all the spray painting because we that's what we do as well part of our package plaster and then spray paint um so that's what you might do with that so, uh, yes, thank you ever so much. We'll see you next time. Ta-ra!